special episode of Real Rescues now on BBC One, and it's all about the animals. Today on Real Rescues, two dogs are trapped in a badger set. Firefighters battled to find and save them using the same high-tech equipment designed to trace earthquake victims. Hello and welcome to Real Rescues. Today we're at Sparsholt College where firefighters are trained for some of the most dangerous emergencies they're ever likely to face. Surprisingly, that's rescuing frightened, trapped or injured animals. But first, an animal in danger can often lead to the owners putting their lives at risk as well. That's why the fire service always treat an animal rescue seriously. The following rescue turned out to be one of the most technical operations the firefighters of West Sussex have carried out. It all started when two adored Jack Russells got into serious difficulties. Using actual fire service footage and reconstruction, this is their story. There's nothing Jack Russell Terriers, Charlie and Rosie like more than a walk in the West Sussex woodlands with their owner, Rachel Hartson. But this particular walk turned into much more than a pleasant family outing. Beautiful day, walking through the woods. Um, the children were having great fun. And so I decided to let both of my dogs off at the same time and started to make our way back up towards the stile. By the time I'd managed to get all of us over and... Um, get organised, call them back, they were gone. Their disappearance sparked a frantic search. And then my friend's dogs were sniffing around some holes, which I discovered were badger holes. You know, you think, please, please don't let them come down the hole. Johnny! Rachel continued to search on alone. After two long hours, she was beginning to lose all hope when suddenly she heard something coming from down the badger holes. Rosie! I thought I heard... A noise, and it sounded like Charlie, but really in the distance, and a really distressed bark. And I was listening, and, um, and then all of a sudden it just went deadly quiet again. Not knowing what else to do, Rachel called the fire service. Within minutes, they were on the scene. There was a, the, your normal fire engine, and then two off-road fire engines, along with all these firefighters. And you start to panic. To think, you know, you're taking all these men away from their job, from my, my dogs. West Sussex Technical Rescue Unit are trained to find and free people trapped in collapsed buildings at home and abroad. This would be an excellent practice. Well, I was faced with quite a large expanse, say about 30 square metres, of holes um, on quite rough terrain, and half of it was uh, in woods. Rachel was sure Charlie and Rosie were down there, but which hole had they gone down? I made a quick uh, assessment of that and then chose a hole or two or three, uh, got down on my belly, stuck my head into the hole and called out the dog's name. But there were no answering barks. Rachel was at her wit's end. There's probably in excess of 30, 40 holes. Which one? Take your pick. It's just, it was a bit like a needle in a haystack. There was no response from any of the holes, but this was an opportunity to try out and practice using the unit's sensitive listening devices. This is equipment designed for finding people trapped at major incidents such as building collapse. We can't simply start moving large amounts of concrete without more direct indication of where a casualty might be. The listening devices, particularly the, the Delsar, are incredibly sensitive and that allows us to narrow down an area of operations. The Delsar listening device should pick up any noise the dogs might make, but this was a huge badger set covering a large area. We'd lay out a grid of sensors and we're able to listen into those sensors as a group or individually. It takes maybe um, 30 seconds or a couple of minutes of just sitting, listening, usually with your eyes closed to really concentrate on the sound to get a very good idea of what the background noise is and then you can take that out of what you're listening to. It was their only chance. If Neil and his team hadn't picked up any signs of life, that would have been it. They wouldn't have known where to dig. The search for Charlie and Rosie would have been called off. 
So they were searching, and it was just coming to the end of their search to, to say that they, they couldn't find them, so that had been an hour. And they, was, you know, they said, look, we're going to try this one last hole. And I was thinking, please. <laughs> you know, sort of quick pray, you know, hoping that they find them, you know. There's just no way I could go home to tell my little boy that I hadn't got them. Rachel was overwhelmed by the work that was going into the search for her two dogs. Ian was also aware that he couldn't dedicate the time and expense of these specialist services for much longer. It was a, a, a worry, if you like, of mine that um, we weren't going to find these dogs. It was always at the back of my mind. And what I could actually say to Rachel, look, you know, we, we can't dedicate a, a life-saving appliance um, any more, give any more time to saving the dogs. It's just not practical. There was just one more tunnel to investigate. If no sounds were detected there, Charlie and Rosie would have been abandoned to their fate. Still to come on Real Rescues. Firefighters listen for sounds of life in a last-ditch attempt to find the two missing dogs down the badger set. It was Charlie, and I managed to um, hear him. They put their phone, earphones on my head, and I could talk to him, because it's like a two-way... They've got these two-way earphones, so I talk to victims underground, and, or dogs in my case.